Welcome back to my channel everyone. Today's tutorial is all about how to draft a skirt pattern and butt contouring. So without further ado, let's get right into it. From the top of the paper, which is going to serve as my waistline, I'm going to measure down 8 inches as the hip line. Then from the top of the paper also, I'm going to go ahead and mark out my knee length, which is 21 inches. Then I'm going to go ahead and rule those lines out and label them as my hip line and my knee line respectively. Then I'm going to go ahead and label the top of the paper as my waistline. Now the next thing I'll be doing now at the waistline is to take my waist circumference divided by 4 and on the hip line, my hip circumference divided by 4. Then at the knee line, I'm going to deduct 2 inches from what I have on the hip line and mark that out on the knee line. Now here I'm just going to be connecting them like so. Before connecting the knee line to the hip line, I'll be showing us a diagram of how an average female body looks like. And I'm going to indicate the waistline, the hip line, and then this next line without which I'll be ruling and it's going to be the under butt line. Then here is my knee line. So to get the under butt line from the knee line, I'm going to be going up by 7 inches for me. Now guys, this differs from 6 to 7 and sometimes 8 inches if you're tall. If you are someone that is very curvy, you can decide to go up from the knee line by 6 inches. And if you're an average size person, you can decide to use 7 inches. But if you are tall, you can go with 8 inches because you know you have a longer leg. So the distance between the knee to the underbutt is going to be much because you have a longer leg. But if you are of an average height, you can go with 6 to 7 inches. But if you're a very tall person, you can go up by 8 inches, 7 to 8 inches. So here for me, I'm going with 7 inches. Then I'll go ahead to roll it out and label it as my underbot line. Then I'll deduct 1.25 from what I have on my hip line and mark that out on the underbot line. I'm going to be drawing the diagram, showing us the diagram here now. So with this diagram which I'm drawing, you can see the difference between the, the hip and then the underbot. So I'm just going to go ahead and roll out those lines and label them. Now guys, you can see the underbot line. You can see that there is much difference between the circumference at the underbot and then the circumference at the hip line. So for if you have this kind of shape, you can decide to deduct 2 inches from what you have on the hip line and mark that on the underbot line. They are not as curvy as this. If you are like the diagram above, you can deduct 1.25, 1.5 thereabouts, depending on how fitted you want it. But for me, I'm going with 1.25. Now I'm just going to connect from my hip line to my underbot line like that. Then from the underbot to the knee, I'm going to go ahead with my straight ruler and connect them. Here I decided to go with length. I changed my mind here and I decided to go with some skirt length of 17 inches. I'm going to go ahead and mark out 17 inches, roll it out and label it as my skirt length. So here I went ahead to cut it out. Then for the back skirt pattern, I'm going to be placing this directly on the fresh pattern paper and duplicate everything I have here on the fresh pattern paper. And that is going to serve as the back skirt draft. Here on the waistline, I took a cutter of my waist, I marked it out, then I added one inch for that. Then on my hip line, I went ahead to mark cutter of my hip, then the underbot line, 
I went ahead to mark. So what I'm just doing here is marking out is to duplicate, like I said earlier on, that I'm just duplicating everything I have on the front pattern to the back. But the only difference here will be on the waistline, I added one inch for that. But at the front, I didn't add any dart allowance because I don't want any dart at the front. Now looking at this diagram guys, this, this is the side view of a female body. You can see the underbot line went in. The part which I didn't build the underbot went in at the center back. So that's what I'm doing here. So for me, I went with 0.75 because the bot is not that big. But if you're on the curvy side, you can use one, you can use 1.25 depending on how curvy, on how big your bot is. So I went ahead to mark the points on my underbot to my hip line. Now on the waistline there also, I went in by one inch for my tightening, for my zipper tightening. Now the essence of the one inch on the waistline is to enable the zipper to sit well. Now what I have on the underbot line, on the underbot line, I went ahead to mark it straight down to the knee and I connected that on a straight line. Yeah, I'm just marking it out because that's going to be a cut off. Now the measurement deducted on the underboards here, I'm just going to return it back to the side. Then on, at the knee also, I'm returning it back to the side and I'm going to reconnect those lines. So here I'm just also returning what I took at the waistline. So when we're connecting it, don't use the curvy path, just connect it with a slight curve back into the hip line. I went ahead to label the center back and then the side back of the back draft so that when I'm joining, I'm not going to join the wrong sides together. Now the next thing I'll be doing here is to mark my dart. So my boss pan divided by 2 is what I marked over there. Then I root a straight line down to the hip line. Then on the straight line for my dart leg, I'm going to be going with 6 inches. So, and I marked out my dart of half half. I took half half on both sides of the line at the waistline. Then I connected to that 6 inches marked. So now the next thing I'll be doing is to mark out my band from my skirts. So for the band, I decided to use 1.5 inches for my band. So that's what I'm marking out. So I'm just going to mark out 1.5 and rule it on a straight line. I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing at the front pattern. I'm just marking out 1.5 inches. So then I'm going to be connecting that on a straight line. I'm labeling my band. I'm going to label the center front of the band and then the side front of the band. So same thing applies to my back draft also. I'm going to lay build the center back on the band and then the side back also on the band. So I'm going to do that on both back and front drafts before cutting out the band. For my back band, I'm going to be closing up the darts which I have on it because I won't be holding any darts on the band. So I'm just going to pick the first line and place it directly on the third line which I have there. Then I'm going to be closing it up.
okay so the next thing i'll be doing now is to join the sides of the bands together guys i'm doing this because i don't want my bands to have joining at the sides but i want the joining i'll be having on the band to be at the center back which is the zipper side to achieve that i'll be bringing the sides of the band together both the side front band and then the side back of the back band together and use my masking tape to join them Then trim off any excess which I have and I have my band ready. When cutting the band on the fabric, you'll be adding 0.5 inch up and 0.5 inch down. But to the center back, you'll be adding your zipper allowance. Now you realize we didn't add any seam allowance to the drafts. So when you're cutting out, you add seam allowance to the center back, to the skirt length and to the side back. And for and of course the waist and of course the front when cutting on your fabric you had seam allowance to the side front and then emil allowance to the skirt length then 0.5 to the waistline and that's all for today's tutorial thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video